Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Charlie. We are doing some flipping and flopping. It's almost like we're a gymnast working out so much mentally because it's a mental exercise and it's a mental trip and it's a great mammary tree that Abraham sits under and only through fire and wood you get a flood of thoughts and it goes with the verse in Jeremiah. It says, test me with my tithes and offerings and see if I don't pour out the floodgates of heaven. And in Proverbs 1, verse 23, test me and I'll pour out all my thoughts to you and teach you my ways. So if you want to be higher thoughts and higher ways, you have to be high with the most high. And that's the title of my book. You guys can pick it up on Amazon, free of charge. Do not buy it if you don't have to. Trust me, spend your money on cannabis with Hashem. It's called Getting High with the Most High, a 420 Bible study. Cannabis versus that Greek word in that Greek book in the Greek mythology, Calamus. Hello? Hello, Lucy? Lucy, where are you, Lucy? You guys remember the old phones? They're like, oh. And my mom said she used to work as an operator in a switchboard. Oh, you don't like, goodbye. Oh, so sorry. Cut off, cut you off. At that point, I do want to do, I do want to do a flip from Matthew being baptized and God is well pleased or Jesus being baptized. God is well pleased. We just heard the warning from Israel in 1 Corinthians 10 2, where they were all baptized into Moses in the cloud. They were under the cloud, the, under the influence of God. But since it's a warning from Israel's history, let's go back to Exodus 14, okay? So we're going to gather our thoughts, gather our firewood, and take a mental trip back to 1400 B.C. 1400 B.C. Might as well be in the 15th century, 16th century, but flip it. 1400 before Christ. There was nothing but fire, wood, and uh, whatever you had in front of you for your land. That is the mentality in the picture. And they're just escaping Egypt. They just are um, crossing the sea. And here they are. As Pharaoh approached the Israel, as Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. Now, wisdom and knowledge would say the Hebrews and the Egyptians and the Hebrews and the Greeks and the Hebrews and the Christians because Christianity is a Greek book. And it's a Greek religion. It has nothing to do with Judaism because they don't actually think that they're Jewish. Or we don't think we're Jewish. I'm going to include myself as Christian because, I listen, I'm going to be the first Christian to say, oh, wait, we do believe in Christ as the Savior. He's the anointed one. Wait, it's the seed of God. Wait, it's... Oh, well. Here's the story. And there were the Egyptians marching up after them. They were terrified. And they cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there was no graves in Egypt that you brought us out here in the desert to die? Beep! 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 What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? And they're grumbling again at Moses, which is horrible. Because God totally says don't grumble. And God actually is leading Moses. So there's no trust and there's complete doubt. Welcome to humanity. Didn't we tell you in Egypt, leave us alone. Let us serve the Egyptian gods. Let us serve other gods. We don't want to serve our God, Hashem, who has ancestry going back to Moses and the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than die here in this desert, abandoned by family, friends, because we only want to talk about the plant and the tree and God's creation. And here's Moses' answer. Do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance of the Lord. He will bring to you today. 
The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still and chill and let the Spirit do the brewing. And then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? I'm sorry, what? Then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? <laughs> He's like, Why are you guys crying out to me? Didn't I just take you out? Didn't we just go over the Passover? Didn't we just leave Egypt? And now you think that I'm going to let you die again? Where is your faith? Oh, wait. Someone said that in the New Testament. Oh, ye of little faith, right? No one, no one really believes with their heart. But when I was faced with life or death in the branch and the system and the calamus and the cannabis, I believed and he delivered me. I am born again of the air, airborne. So it says, the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the other Israelites to move on. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so the Israelites can go through the sea on ground. So the Israelites can go through the smoke. Start a big fire. Let's go right through that fire and the forest and they will get lost in the midst of the forest and the trees will come alive and they'll start talking to us. <laughs> Sorry, I just went through all the movies where the trees are like, Rah. can you imagine Rob Williams? <laughs> Bro, I totally saw that. So with that, it's a little mental fun laughing gas as well. But seriously, this is where the discipline takes over and you get back to the word. And it says, now raise your staff. Now we know in Exodus 4 that he took his staff, that in Psalm 23 our brain says, wait, the rod and the staff, they comfort me. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He anoints my head with oil. At that point, it's the food. So the staff is the food. How do we use the fire and the wood together? We have some fun, but we always give credit to God. So he says, raise your staff, raise your hand, raise the aroma. And if the aroma is there, I'm there. I'm going to protect you because at that point, if you don't have the aroma, I'm going to question you. Why don't you have the aroma? Why do you want to be cursed? Why do you want to be silly and folly and foolishness? Just repent in sackcloth and ashes and the kingdom of God will be near you. Wow, that made sense. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand. Canvas it over the sea to divide the water. Now here comes the separation. So the Israelites can go through the sea of reeds and through the cloud on dry ground. Of course they can go on dry ground. It's just a fog. It's a mist. I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And I will gain glory, which is fire wood and the pillar of smoke which fills the temple, I will gain glory through Pharaoh and all his army, through his chariots and his horsemen. The Egyptians will know that I, the Lord, when I gain glory through Pharaoh, through Moses, through the prophets, through Solomon, through the seed of God, through Emmanuel, and through the fire, wood, and smoke, that there is a God among them. Then the angel of God, who had been traveling in front of Israel's army, so you got one in front of you, you got one behind you, you're well covered, withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of cloud also moved from in front of them and stood behind them coming between the armies of Egypt and Israel and Greece and Israel and Hanukkah and Christmas. But now it is time to give the olive branch and say, Baruch Hashem, 
to the left hand meeting the right hand and Israel understanding what the branch is for and then serving everyone Jews first for salvation comes from the Jews but who knew that it would come from an actual piece of wood like a puzzle we were under a curse but if we go spell and we read the Gospels and the old and the new and put the fire and the wood together well you get firewood, liberty, and the crown of thorns, and the blazing torch for the Statue of Liberty. Jesus says, if you set your mind on fire, you'll be free. Baruch Hashem, to the 420 Bible study, and to the cloud and pillar of fire and the pillar of smoke.